Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I am so, so excited because I am going to be a guest designer for Top Flight Stamps all through the month of September. Every Sunday, I'm gonna be posting a new special Quetzalcraft Top Flight collaboration. I love this because Top Flight Stamps is one of my favorite crafting stores and Quetzalcraft is one of my favorite stamping companies. Quetzalcraft collaborating with Top Flight Stamps to make exclusive sets available only through Top Flight Stamps in the United States. And I absolutely love this Quetzalcraft dogs stamp set. It's one of my all-time favorites. I think the personalities of these little dogs comes through so clearly and they're so cute and whimsical. Along with that dog stamp set came this really cute accessories stamp set. It's great for so many different occasions and for this card that I made I used this little witch's hat from this funny accessories set. I also use, this is one of the new sets, it's called Pilgrim, and as you can see, it's perfect for fall, but it also has some things for winter, and from this set, I used this little cape, as well as the broom, and from this Halloween stamp set, uh, I use this little smaller witch's hat, and this really funky haunted mansion. All of these sets work so well together and I can't wait to share with you guys what I created with this. So first I thought I would share with you guys a little bit of Copic coloring. I'm going to color up this Doberman stamp and I'm just using a couple of E tones. This is a kind of a lighter mid-tone brown and I hadn't quite decided if I was going to give the dog a black kind of torso or a brown torso and so I thought I would go ahead and try the lighter color and I knowing that I could go darker over top and uh, but I couldn't go the reverse so I'm first trying out this darker area just by the muzzle by the top of the kind of neck uh, I know the rest of the Doberman is going to be this darker warm gray so I'm trying to lay in all of that while maintaining the brown areas um, that I know will be kept brown. And here I'm trying to decide, do I color up that chest? Yes, I'm gonna go with the more traditional Doberman coloring. I'm leaving the feet kind of that lighter brown, but the rest of the body, other than the little patches um, where I guess kind of the shoulder bones would be on the dog, uh, the muzzle and the little eyebrows and the feet. Everything else on the Doberman is gonna go with this kind of warm gray. I'm using a W5. Now I'm gonna just re-emphasize the areas that I had colored brown. I'm also gonna try and lay in a little bit of shadow. Uh, what's great about these Quetzalcraft stamps is that they often show where the shadow areas would be with the kind of hash drawings. So it makes coloring the images kind of a no-brainer. I'm going in now right with the darker warm gray, the W7. Um, and I knew I wanted to make the area, eye area pop. And to do that, I wanted to uh, bring in that darker warm gray. I'm also um, making sure the top of that muzzle, uh, the other areas that are blended with the lighter gray and the darker gray, I wanna keep the highlights, but also blend a little bit more naturally. So um, I'm just going back and forth, uh, adding a little bit more of that uh, warm brown color for the shadowed areas in the muzzle, the bottoms of the feet, the base of the muzzle, the under parts, and I'm going to blend back out with that lighter brown. Um, and that's it for the body. I'm going to add a little bit of R30 for inside the ears and that yellow for the spikes on the collar. I wanted the collar to be red, so I'm using an R35, and then I'm gonna blend in a little bit on the edges, just and the bottom of the collar to give it a little bit of depth, even though it probably won't show up very much. Um, I do like to add a couple of colors for any, or a couple of shades of every color to give a little bit more dimension. 
Now for the eyes, I decided to go a, kind of a lighter brown because I really, like I said, wanted the eyes to pop. And so I'm using a YR21 and a 24, and then I'm adding highlights with a white gel pen, and then I'm adding the pupils in with a black glaze pen. Here you see me, I've snipped off the top of the ears after all of that, um, and I'm kind of cutting around the eye, sorry I'm a little off camera here, so that I can put on the witch's hat on the top of the little dog. I want the eyes to still be visible, so I'm, I'm kind of cutting around them and I'm placing the hat behind. And that's kind of a cartoony technique. Obviously eyes don't go on top of a hat, but in cartoons you'll often see them doing this so that the eyes stay visible. And next I have cut off the ears and I've cut the two ears apart so that I can place them a little higher and on either side of the hat so it looks like the ears are popping through the little witch's hat. And I like doing that. Uh, I think it actually looks better this way than keeping the dog whole and not cutting the ears apart because then you would lose most of the ears. You'd probably only see like the little tips of the pointed ears. For the cape, I've cut this apart too because I realize it's a little wider the neck of the cape than this Doberman. So I've cut the left side off and I'm going to glue that on so that it looks like it's wrapped around the dog's neck. And then on the right side, I'm just trying to see about how much of this cape on the right side would show. So I'm going to just hand cut off the edge. And then just to make sure that the shading is done correctly, I've um, ink the edge with a black marker and I've decided I want a little bit more shading on that edge so I'm going to go back in and recolor this cape. If you're interested in any of the particular Copic colors that I use please check out my blog post which I'll link to below. All of those colors are listed um, for all of the materials that I used here. Now for the little beagle that I colored off camera, I decide I'm gonna have him straddling this witch's broom. So I've cut apart the legs, uh, which worked out perfectly because I'd cut them apart anyway to do the little space between the two legs. So I'm going to place that broom there. And then for the little paw, I cut off the little uh, back paw. So I'm placing the front paw on the front of the broom and then that little tiny piece there I'm attaching to the back of the broom. Um, it's these kind of little details that I think make the, the character come to life. Now for the smaller witch's hat, I'm going to have just it sitting on top of his head and the eyes show up enough so I'm satisfied with that. Now for the background, I'm using a little scrap packaging and a circle die from Diamond Dies. This is the sixth largest die in their circle nesting die set. And I've created a little mask. And I'm using some distress inks and I'm gonna blend on what I hope will look like a moon. And I decide I'm gonna do two shades of the distress yellow inks because I want it to have more dimension. So I'm going darker on the outside and lighter on the inside. And that's the moon. Now I'm taking the inside of the die cut piece and I've temporarily adhered that so that I'm covering up that yellow blended area. And now I'm gonna go around and create the uh, evening sky or night sky as it were. So right around that moon, I'm using seedless preserves. That's kind of a lighter, more rosy purple. Then around that, I'm going to go with a dusty Concord, which is kind of a deeper purple. And unfortunately, my ink pad is getting a little bit dry there, that dusty Concord. So it's not coming out as juicy as the Seedless Preserves, but that's okay. I'm going to just continue to add layers of ink. And uh, I'm not worried about a super clean blend because I know as it settles, it will blend out more. I wanted the night sky to be even a little darker, especially around the edges further away from the moonlight. So I'm using chip sapphire here and I'm blending all around the edges and um, blending in toward the moon. Now I'm going to go back in and re-emphasize the seedless preserves, then go back in and put in one more layer of that dusty concord. 
And I realized that for this background, I didn't go far enough down on the cardstock piece. This is going to be the entire inside of the card. So I'm bringing it down further. This is going to be a standard A2 size card. So I need to come down at least past the halfway point, uh, which is four and a quarter. So I decide the moon looks a little too like plasticky. So I'm going back in and I blended in some of that seedless preserves all around the edges at the bottom, especially to give it more dimension. And then I blended it back out with a yellow. Now I showed you real quick this from the stamp set, the uh, haunted mansion that I'm going to have in there in this little scene. So I'm stamping this out so that the top turrets and the little flag show up in the moon. Uh, and it's silhouetted. So I'm first starting this with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Uh, and I don't know, I just grabbed that ink, but it doesn't come out kind of saturated enough. So I'm doing it again with VersaFine ink, and that is a much better coverage. I'm gonna do that stamping twice with that VersaFine ink. This is the Black Onyx ink, and it stamped beautifully. So it covered up all of the blended ink behind. Now I'm gonna score it and fold it over so I have a nice clean crisp fold and so for the bottom part of the inside of this card I'm going to just keep it black simple um, black cardstock this is actually really thin black cardstock because I didn't want to add too much bulk to this card and now I'm taking the Lawn Fawn Stitched Hillside Pop-Up Sty I'm going to run this through my Big Shot with really extra heavyweight black cardstock because I know I want this to be very stiff and rigid. I'm going to show you how to fold it. You fold along that score line that's part of the die and then I'm making that crisp with that bone folder. Now I'm going to fold back the little tabbed areas at the back uh, and I'm pushing the back hill all the way back and the tab all the way back. And now I'm gonna add some glue to that base where I'm gonna be attaching it to the card base. I'm also attaching, adding a little glue to the little tiny tabs. And you'll see here how I place it up against that crease, that center fold, push that back hill back, tabs back, and then fold the card over. And then as you see, it comes up and boom, you've got two stitched hillsides. Now I decided I wanted to add an interactive element. So I've taken a little piece of plastic, just a little strip from some craft product packaging, and I'm poking a little hole at the base using my um, tool-in-one, my Spellbinders tool-in-one, and I'm poking a tiny little brad through that uh, base of the back hill. Then I'm putting the brad through and then the little plastic strip opened up the brads and now I can attach that little beagle riding a broom with some beacon three-in-one glue. This is great for non-porous substances like plastic. So I'm adding that glue to the back of the ears and the belly and a little bit of that broom so that little flying witch beagle is secure on that little plastic strip and I'm attaching the Doberman Witch on the lower left of the card on the front hill. So it looks like he is looking up at his little buddy. And I decided for the sentiment, I was gonna keep it simple. I'm just using a Versa marker and writing out Happy Halloween. And I'm gonna use some Ranger Super Fine Embossing Powder in white tapping off the excess, and now I'm gonna just heat emboss that happy Halloween sentiment. This is the finished card. I absolutely love it. It was so fun to do. I loved using all of these little accessory pieces. It was like playing with paper dolls again. Um, I don't even know if kids today know about paper dolls. <laughs> that totally aged me, um, but this is the completed card. I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to check out Top Flight Stamps for all of their new awesome Quetzalcraft stamp sets. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you guys are having a wonderful crafty day.